Welcome back to another video. It's Bath City Knox County match reaction. A 3 0 defeat on this Tuesday night. Let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments down below. Sorry, like the video if you do go on to do so and subscribe if you're new. All the support's massively appreciated. Unfortunately, um, the support is, has been unbelievable the last week or so. Um, but it's probably come because we've been getting absolutely trounced every game and getting absolutely obliterated by teams. And it happened again today, getting played off the park by Notts County. And credit to them because that, you know. I feel like that they have they have the right structure there, but we don't. You know that no matter what happens, Luke Williams goes. You know they ain't got on board with a new manager, but he plays the right way to how they see their model, and they've got unbelievably talented players. I mean, you know, Jody Jones, Dan Crowley, uh, Macaulay Langstaff, the, the number nine um, who were right and full to, today up against Liam Rydow. I mean, another questionable decision there by Graham Alexander putting Liam Rydow up against the Man Mountain in um, whatever his name was, I, for I forgot it, and you know the midfield, the, the way they played, they played us off the park, our midfield were non-existent, their midfield ran the show, um, you know, it, it's not the first time this season we've conceded four goals to, um, three or more goals to Notts County, and there's a reason for that, you know, they, they haven't been good recently, you know, one win in 2024, low on confidence, we should have took advantage of that, First half, we had flashes where we put them under pressure, don't like they could have made a mistake. They grew in confidence throughout the game because we allowed that to happen. We didn't take any of our chances, they did. And there were, uh, there were streets ahead of us. And we get told season after season that we have a budget, we have a squad to compete against the teams at the top of this league. Only once have we done that in League Two. That was last season under Mark Hughes. And he were deemed not good enough in October. I'm not saying that it were bad to sack him because I do feel like his time was probably up. Did he go too early? Well, all I'm going to say is I, I never said Mark Hughes out. But it probably was about time to, to get rid of him. Would we have been any better or worse off with him? I'm not sure. Because, to be honest with you, um, yes, McDonald and Alexander have had ones to keep us away from a relegation battle. But the problem that we have now is, you know, McDonald, you know, f fell away towards the end. Obviously, it were only two games that we lost, but we, we got battered in both, really. And one were to bottom the league, Sutton. Um, Alexander's had spells and now there's people saying should he be sacked and you know is it better that we do just say you know the, the shake hands and say it's time to go because we've seen a lot to suggest that we can improve next season but we've seen a lot especially in the last week but throughout times but maybe he ain't the right man for Bradford City um, I personally still think he is because what what's going to sack a manager going to do the people I above need more questions to for me um, I know there's people turning I know there's, there's more turning by the game and understandably so when you're getting battered but for me you've, you've just got to wake up and smell the coffee because at the end of the day um, this has been going on for too long it's been going on for far too long a team that's been in decline as big as a club as we are you know we're not we're not huge I accept that you know is the league one our level maybe it is I know a lot of fans use that in, in favour of Sparks and Rupp but you know we've never been a big club um, our fan base deserves better but the fact is, we we keep getting told lies. You know, we keep getting told we're competitive League Two team. We, we should be having a budget in the top three last season and a couple of seasons before that as well. And we have a top seven budget. Right, so if, if we do have that budget then, um, the same budget that Ma uh, Ryan Sparks has come out and said he hadn't had a penny from Stephen Rupp and yet he keeps coming out saying how much of his money he puts into a football club. Yeah, he's got a stadium that's rotting. Uh, training ground where uh, you, you've got Mr. Deutsch coming on and, and saying, uh, sorry lads, it's year 7 PE today. Um, you know, you, you've got, uh, there's so much wrong with a football club all over the infrastructure, like I, say, like I say, compared to Mansfield, compared to Stockport, compared to Notts County today, d d there's none of that. It's literally just uh, throw a dart, see what it lands on, and l l let's go and buy that player. That's what it is, it's, it's scattergun, you know, um, because the quality we've got, it's non-existent to what other teams have got. Like, like I've said, you know, I'm not angry. I'm not going to come on here ranting like I did Saturday because Saturday and last Tuesday, it was more anger because I felt like the season was slipping away. Today confirmed that the season's gone and slipped away, um, if it hadn't already, because these players can't put in consistent runs. You know, they can only go six games un unbeaten or what have you, and then they go and throw it away because either they haven't got the mentality or they haven't got the quality. And Graham Alexander said, you can't fault the effort today, you can't fault the character and the resilience. Well, I'm sorry, Graham, but I can doubt that. Because, um, you know, th that second half, edge dropped. And if, if it isn't an effort or character, and I think there are a lot of players out there 
maybe a handful who did put at that effort in that, that I like to see and require uh, from a Bath City 11 or player. I did see that from a few players. Um, I didn't from others, but I did from a few. Then if it, if it isn't that and the manager's convincing that, then where does it lie then? Where does it lie conceding 10 goals in the last three games all at home? Where does it lie being played off the park in back-to-back -back games and losing to bottom of the league? You know, wh where does it lie then? Does it lie at your door, Graham? Is it because you're not in the dugout? Do the players not, um, you know, feel like they've got a leader ready to go to war with them? Um, is that it? Are you not coaching them well? The midfield were completely open today. We got played off the park. Second half was absolutely atrocious. And he said that, you know, gaps opened up because we, op we opened up. And I think that's on him as well. Going with a midfield three of Smallwood, Chapman and Walker. Starting Tyler Smith, who is just useless. I don't see any qualities in him at all. Um, you know, keeping Liam Rideau in the team. But not only keeping Liam Rideau in the team, but marking him with the, uh, the one of the biggest units I've seen in League 2 this season, who had him all game, all game he had him, and uh, he, he, he was exposed, but he just looked like a, a man who just got who won a competition to, to, to play alongside him. You know, he tried his best, he put his effort in, but he, he couldn't compete with him, and that that's that's the ultimate thing, and that's the disappointing thing. Instead of uh, putting Kelly in there, probably one of the best centre-backs we've got and had this season, who would have put in a much better effort against him because size-wise they're not too dissimilar. But he goes with Liam Rydell, a, a, a left-back, which is, is odd. I, I don't have a problem with him starting centre-back because if you stick him with a back three, you're limited with your options. I wouldn't have started him. Um, but then, you know, I, I didn't know Sam Stubbs were injured, so maybe you do go to a back four. I don't know. So there's so many question marks on the playing side. And then you look up to the off-field, and then it is said all the time as well, uh, you can't fault the lack of quality in the squad. There's, a, you know, there's quality in there. Then if there's quality in there, and uh, today and the last couple of games haven't been a lack of effort, then surely that lies at your door then for not getting the quality out of the players as well. So I feel like he's stabbed himself in the back by today's press conference, uh, whatever you want to call it, post-match interview, by basically lying down why he's not good enough. Like I say, I'm still with him because I've seen enough from him and I think it's ridiculous to have five managers in, in five years or whatever it is and probably more over over the years you go through as well. We have no stability in this football club and we have no direction. And to sack another manager, that be about, that would be four managers including caretakers we've had this season, which is just, it, that's a joke in itself. And it would it would obviously be five managers including caretakers because you bring in a new one. Um, it all depends on, is Alec, do you believe Alexander is the right man to take us into next season? Because that's all, what it's all about now, uh, preparing for next season, making sure that we're, we're good enough. And we won't be, because we've got the same people bringing in the players that are nowhere near. We've got the same players, um, same people trying to convince the players who are here to, to stay, which I feel like your allergies, you know, and, and, and those type of players are going to have to be really convinced to stay at this football club, because it's only going one way. Um, I've seen a lot of people saying it's sleepwalking towards the National League and I don't disagree. I feel like unless we pull our fingers out and get, get rolling, then um, you know we're going to end up rolling into the National League. And that's not me being re reactionary because I feel like you know I'm not going to come here ranting and raving and flipping, you know, throwing my toys out the pram because I don't feel that. And, you know, I, I don't feel that m much about, about Bath City as well anymore. And I know a lot of people didn't go today and I can't fault them for that because you put your hard-earned money into the football club, you know, you work all week and the people working today, a lot of people don't just travel from Bradford, you know, a lot of other um, reasons why they might not have come as well and, uh, you know, why put your time and money into a football club that doesn't repay that in any way and, uh, you know, like I said, I can't fault anyone who didn't go. Um, and, and one thing I, I've took from, well, last year mainly, you asked me in August or any time before then, what's the what's the first thing I care about and, and love? And I'd say Bath City. I have a very different uh, answer to that now after what what happened last year. And you, you know why why I went away for a month or, or so. And you know, for for me, th there's there's more important things to Bath City in 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 just life now. And a lot of people will see that as well now, not just um, with some going on. They'll, they'll just see that in, in general. What's the point in putting all your time into something that never repairs that? Um, 
probably gone on a bit too long about that there. Um, but one thing I, I, I was looking at before today's game, so I'll add something to that. Um, with the mentality, we've won 11 points from losing positions this season. We've gone 1-0 down in now 21 games and only won 11 points from losing positions. And we've conceded 17 goals, that still stands, in the first 20 minutes of matches. Actually, one minute, that could actually be updated. Oh no, it is, yeah, because Longstaff scored in the 12th minute. So yeah, we've now conceded 18 goals in the first 20 minutes of matches. Those are staggering stats. They're absolutely, they're jaw-dropping. It, that, that's disgraceful. And that's when you talk about a character and the mentality that's wrong. Like I say, I feel like first half we got the pressing right and there were good parts and positives to take from it. And then second half we just fell away. And I, I felt like a few players, um, you know, perhaps bottled it a bit. And I feel like that's what's happened this last week. You know, I, I don't think we've, we've had it in us to, to go and win those games at any point. And uh, I, I think that, that sort of backs it up, the lack of mentality. Like I said earlier, with the, with the home stats as well. You know, that, that's a mentality problem with players that we've recruited. You know, we've had two different Edo recruitments in that time. Um, probably a whole array of scouts as well. And Ryan Sparks, who would have been in negotiations, or at least involved in the uh, scouting of players, you'd, you'd imagine, you'd assume. And five different managers also. Um, in, in, in that run of home form and we keep bringing in players who haven't got the character to play for Bradford City haven't got the mentality to play for Bradford City and clearly haven't got the quality to play for Bradford City and if they did then we wouldn't be in League 2 that's all I'm going to say on that but like I said the, the performance weren't good enough today there were positives in that first half I thought there were good signs I felt like we could have been 1 or 2 and up as well because I felt like um I can't remember the chances exactly, but we had a lot of good opportunities um, where we broke into the penalty area and didn't take them, and that's a quality difference they took theirs. And it, like I said, that second half, they we, we made them look like Brazil, but you know they deserved it. The way they passed the ball for our thirds, um, you know the, we had nothing in the centre of our midfield. Uh, that's got to be at the hands of your small woods and the, the shape as well, and the person all going with Chapman and walking the midfield free um, which is baffling <laughs> again uh, from from Graham with that one um, and yeah like I say they just pass through us way too easily and they look like um, a team but could definitely turn their season around and I won't be I won't be um, surprised if they did from now you know because if you're on a bad run of form play Bradford City because they'll give you an easy free win and I, I won't be surprised if they turn the form around now and maybe get towards the playoff places because like I say we bottled it there's no other term for that because we've had we, we had two games in hand before today's game we were seven points off um, well we, we probably were five four sorry four or five points away last Tuesday from the playoffs and now we're seven points away with one game in hand and um you know, it's just it's not it's just not going to happen, and uh, like I said, we've, we've got to look to turn up towards next season now. Unfortunately, um, that that's all that's all we've got, and that, that's that's a great shame. It's a great shame, and uh, he's Alexander the man. I mean, no player ratings. Then we'll, we'll quickly go through them as quick as I can. Sam Walker gets man a match. The only player who well, there were a couple of others I thought had decent games, but Sam Walker. I'm going to give him a four, even though we considered three goals. Um, the, the free kick, um, the, the wonderful ball by um, Jody Jones. You know, J Jones and Crowley and Langstaff, those those players, honestly, I, I was in awe. And the main, I was in all of them. You know, the tour was apart, and, you know, I'll probably be, uh, God Christ, dreaming of them or something because. That they, they're a sensational, and Jones's cross into uh, Yatta was the striker. Um, he's got three goals in in two now. Um, looks like a brilliant player. So yeah, and he allows Langstaff to get more into a game. In the preview, I said how he seems a bit more isolated, a bit more you know in box in the box type of a player. Today, he was much different to that, and got into a game, and you know were a big part of them breaking us through our midfield because they had loads of different runners. 
Um, and like I say, it could have been much more than three if it weren't for Sam Walker in goal. Made some brilliant saves. Don't know you go, Kate. He gets, he gets a, I don't know, two or three. I don't think he was as bad as people make out. He had a brilliant marauding one down the right side. Loads of blocks. Uh, I'll give him a three, actually. I thought, I'm, I'm not afraid to say that. I thought he was all right. His passing was shocking at times, to be honest with you. But like I said, that marauding one way, he, he, I think he blocked it on under tackle. Um, came darting down the right side, put a wonderful cross in for Chapman, and he added it onto a post, which was a good header as well. So you know that was another where we, we could have could have scored on another day. But um, yeah, good good play from Oyugoki. Some good blocks, some good tackles in there. Positionally, were not too bad. And you know, for 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 his first game as as a centre back for ninety minutes, I'd, I'd be uh, sure in saying he hadn't played that much. He did all right for me, and I, I, I think that might be controversial. So let me know yours in the community tab. Liam Rydow gets a one. Uh, like I say, Jatta uh, had him that their front sort of three, four, if you like, um, time apart. Um, like I say, effort was probably there, but he's just not good enough, and that's all I can ever say about him. And it feel a bit um, sorry for him being put up against Jatta because he were never going to come out on top of him. Uh, Kieran Kelly get, gets a gets a two. Uh, got done for the third goal. Got absolutely span by Jatta. Uh, and overall, just weren't weren't great as 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 a, as a centre back in in that three. And yeah, there was a drop off from from Saturday for, from him uh, definitely. Lewis Richards gets a three. I thought um, in terms of getting down the left wing, um, it, it was pretty good at, at getting up and down there, but. His, uh, his stamina means you know he can't play full 90 and his crossing into a box was shocking to be fair his defending won't no actually he gets a, he gets a two I'm talking myself into a one it um, yeah he, he won't great but I do again feel for, for him a bit because there was something I mentioned there was a serious lack of movement on the ball no one making any runs I think that comes down to the 3 5 2 we're in you know because there's no number 10s or wingers whatever you the, the, the number 10s but they do move out wide no one making those ones and smith and cook were too static together both wanted to play the same way that didn't work and walker you know they were tracking back as an eight a lot and couldn't move into the into the positions to to to, to give himself time on the ball and richard and holiday came unstuck when they got the ball wide because they had no options but to maybe go back or make a run and end up losing the ball. Um, so, yeah, I did, did feel for them to a bit. And, and, and Allardy gets a free. Won his best game. I thought first half he pocketed Jody Jones. Um, like I say, second half, they won riot. And, um, you, you know, that, that were part of Allardy. I feel like maybe we saw why he would drop Saturday. Maybe a bit of fatigue in there. He did look a bit leggy as the game went on. But that's because he gives 110%. You know, it, a stray ball a couple of times he played down the line to no one. And he chased after that, and I think everyone could see that. You know, he's a he's a Bradford City player, and he gets it. And not many did. He was sensational today for work rate. Um, to to say that he probably were, was fatigued. Uh, Gilead got injured, unfortunately. I hope it's not serious. Um, but for me, he gets a two. I don't think he's having a great game, and he did look like he did look leggy. He looked fatigued. Um, you know, he he won't track him back like he was. He won't go into tackles like he was. Um, so that's why I'm going to give him a two. It would have been a one if he didn't get injured because I probably wouldn't have picked up on it as much. But uh, you could definitely see that um, that that was coming into his game. Rich Small gets a one. Um, not normal. I'm not normally critical of Small as much as I will be today. As a captain, he's. I, I noticed it in t today's game. Um, he was constantly, constantly shouting, constantly waving his hands around. Uh, there was one moment when he was waving his hands around, moaning about Summit, um, Summit and Nolt, and the, the, those came running through his area, and no challenge made, then he was walking. So many times he were doing that, and that was, that's a poor of a small game. I thought to, he'd be right up for it today after Saturday, as the captain, as the leader, he's got to stand up and show what he's worth, go flying to tackles, and his legs look gone. And I forget how old small is, a lot of people do as well. He's 34 in December, he's 33 now. We talk about McDonald not being able to play Saturday, Tuesday. Richie Smallwood plays a whole lot of games, barely gets a rest, and he's looking leggy. And, um, you know, maybe it's an age thing, I don't know. But his legs look to be going, for me, um, anyway. Uh, so, yeah, he gets a one. He was absolutely shocking. Jamie Walker 
he, get, he gets a two because he put a lot of effort in and clearly sharpness in there because his touch was poor, his final ball was poor, his decision making was poor, um, his finishing was poor again. Uh, should have scored Saturday, should have scored again today. Um, all round poor, but in terms of effort levels and tracking back and putting tackles in and fighting, you know, I saw that and you see that from Jamie Walker, but overall play and technically shocking. Uh, and Andy Cook, he gets a two. Uh, a lot of criticism for Cook after today's, today's game. He looked like a footballer. A lot of players didn't. He did. His control was sensational. You know, chest, first touch, turning, moving. There was just no movement. There was no support for him. Uh, Tyler Smith were making the same runs when Wright came on and sort of, um, you know, were selfish and again making the same runs that Cook were going to. No one won his wavelength and I, I felt sorry for him because he isolated, didn't get much of a chance and were trying to create chances of his own again like he were last season. But I thought overall play, it, it looked mal miles above everyone else on that pitch for us. Uh, Tyler Smith gets a one. Useless. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, obviously disappointing. Like I say, I'm not really angry. I'm just massively disappointed because I, it's just confirmed to me what I thought about this team for the majority of the season, if not all of it. And... Uh, yeah, I think the the biggest question now for me as well, for you, is is Alexander the one for us? Because I've seen good parts and I feel like it comes back to the higher ups. It definitely comes back to them. I think season tickets, you know, early bird is, is out there. You know, are you going to buy a season ticket? Because a lot weren't there today and I don't blame them like I said earlier. Um, the club have a decision to make. Uh, obviously, the 21-22 season, the decision was to sack Derek Adams and bring Mark Hughes in, load of positivity. I said in the month of review in January that, that we will get pulled back in this season and then we'll be pulled back off. And I said that um, Alexander, um, we, we might go on a good one again, but we'll go on a bad one again and Alexander might get sacked and replaced by Tony Pew uh, not Tony Pugh, uh, dancing guy, FA Cup final, Crystal Palace, what's his name, he's on Talk Sport. Alan Pardew, that's it, Pardiola, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm not saying that will happen, but that was just my quote, and I won't be surprised if Alexander gets sacked, and I, he shouldn't, he shouldn't for me, I think it'd be cowardly, because any time a bit of heat comes on Ryan Sparks, what does he do, he presses the fire extinguisher button, and uh, presses the panic button, it, the overall button, on Tenable, if you, if you, that's not even on TV anymore, they replace it with flipping rubbish, flipping lingo, whatever it is, rubbish. Uh, Tenable's a, a brilliant game show. If you never watched it, you can't. But um, I, I have it on my phone. It's great. But it, it, they press the overall button, and um, and, and just you know goes yeah we'll, we'll start the manager. And he's, he did it with Mark Hughes. He's done it with many other managers before. Any time pressure comes upon him and it, and Stefan up, he texts the manager and. Um, season tickets and go back up I won't be surprised but um, I won't do it myself so let me know your thoughts in the comments down below waffled on a bit there um, like the video if you did subscribe if you're new have a good one